Georgia Fuddle, The Great Detective, Chapter 4, The Case of the Purloined Puss Wednesday morning did not begin well for Georgia Fuddle. When she pulled back her curtains, she could see it was grey and rainy. Someone seemed to have used all the hot water before she had chance to get a shower. None of her favourite cereal was left for breakfast, which meant she had to have porridge. And Georgia liked porridge, but today... She had to have sugar on it instead of a dollop of golden syrup because, guess what? Somebody had finished all the golden syrup. She decided to groom her pets because that always made her feel better when she was down in the dumps. Osborne was very happy. He loved to lie on his back and have his tummy brushed. He could get a bit silly when Georgia brushed his tail. He would put up with it for about two strokes of the brush and then try to bite the brush or his tail, which usually meant he ended up running round in circles. Once she had finished brushing the dog, she turned her attention to Zoot, her pet guinea pig. She carefully cleaned out Zoot's cage. That took a while because, as you will know if you have a pet guinea pig, they can be rather messy. Next, she put the pretty ginger-haired rodent on her lap and began to comb Zoot made a contented squeaking noise. Zoot was a bit knotty, especially where Osborne kept licking her. The job got easier once Osborne decided to lie down in his basket. Zoot didn't seem to worry either way. She liked being combed by Georgia as much as she liked being licked by Osborne. Look at you and your scrawny pets, laughed Petrock as he passed the door. They'll be scruffy no matter what you do to them. Yeah, just like your tufty hair, sniggered Georgia in return. Petrock scowled and tried to stick down the tufty bits of his fringe with a bit of spit on his fingers. You'd better keep an eye on those mongrels, he told her. There's been some pet stealing in the village. Really? said Georgia, a little fearful. Especially cat napping. Do you mean cats sleeping in de dangerous places? <laughs> Georgia, you're a buffoon, howled her brother. Catnapping is like kidnapping, only with cats. She could hear him laughing all the way to his room and wondered why brothers have to be so annoying. She knew she wasn't annoying at all. It must be a boy thing. Then she remembered what Petrock had said about catnapping. This looks like a case for Georgia Fuddle, local detective, she told her pets. Osborne whacked his tail and Zoot squealed loudly. Georgia was pacing the streets of Tiddlepond within a quarter of an hour in her brown detective coat and equipped with her notebook and magnifying glass. She made a note in her book every time she saw a cat. After she'd looked at it through her magnifying glass if she got close enough, without it running away, she wrote down what colour each cat was. If she did get close enough, she would see if it had a collar, and give it a stroke as well. Some cats were very friendly. Some cats ran away scared if she looked at them for too long. Some cats looked quite cross, turned their backs on Georgia and walked away. As she passed one cottage, an old lady with blue hair came out and called, Blackie, Blackie, where are you? Excuse me, Georgia said to her, has your cat been napped? I'm sorry, I don't understand, said the old lady, looking confused. Cat napped, Georgia corrected herself. The blue haired lady laughed. <laughs> I feel sorry for anyone trying to catnap my Blackie, she said. You'd scratch them from here to Kingdom Come. <laughs> with that, up came a very fierce-looking black puss that strolled into the cottage as if he owned it. Georgia spent most of the rest of the morning trying to reunite cats with their owners. One of the main things about cats is that it's very hard to make them go in one direction if they want to go in another. Petra Masule told Georgia she wanted her cat to have more exercise. She gave Georgia a ball of wool and Doodah the cat chased her as she walked around the village trailing a thread of it behind her. Mrs Clutterbuck shooed Georgia away because her cat, Mr Pooney, was too scared to come out of the house if other people were about. Victor from the post office 
got Georgia to climb a tree with him to fetch down Ginger. Ginger was always climbing trees, but was far too lazy to get down on her own. Usually, Georgia was a fan of tree climbing, but Ginger was sitting quite far along a branch that she didn't think was strong enough to hold her for long. Don't worry, Victor called up to her. I'll catch you if you fall. Georgia decided against crawling any further along the branch. She just shook it quite hard. And soon enough, Ginger came walking along it towards her. Then she jumped over Georgia and climbed down the tree as if she hadn't a care in the world. Georgia found it a bit harder than the cat to climb down and she scraped her knee on the bark as she descended. It would need a plaster. When she looked up to ask Victor for one, all she saw was his back as he walked towards the post office carrying Ginger. Georgia was not impressed. 